My name is Tanya Fincham, along with Juliana Nicolasian. We're with Oklahoma State University, and today we're in Allen, Oklahoma, to speak with Joyce and Ray Ryle. Ryle? Mm -hmm. And this is part of our Centennial Farm family, so thank you for having us today. You're welcome. Let's start with having you tell us what you know uh, about how your family came to own the property to begin with. <laughs> Go it's ahead. Your, no, it's your family. Oh. Well, actually, I guess there's a couple stories. We heard that my dad had said that uh, this wasn't achieved actually in the land run. Uh, but my great grandpa Watson traded a, a set of mules and a wagon for this land and uh, they uh, farmed it for well until he died and then uh, my grandpa Ryle, Ralph Ryle, took over the farming and in 1970, well Ralph Ryle was my grandma Watson or Grandma Ryle was a Watson. Okay. Okay, and uh, th they actually came, the Riles actually came from Wiley, Colorado. They had uh, some land up there and somehow traded this for that up there. And uh, that's kind of how the Riles got into it. And uh, they have owned it ever since. So. So the Watson was your great grand was great, my great grandfather. And what was his first name? His name first name was John, and uh, his wife's name was Selena. 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 Yes. And how many children did they have? They had three girls and a boy, mm -hmm. and uh, all of the girls left here, and the boy he went to Oregon. And my grandma stayed here. Of course, you know, she got married to Ralph Ryle. And her name was Lottie. Little bitty tiny lady. I, I knew her. She was still alive when we got married. And just, she wasn't five foot tall and didn't even weigh 100 pounds, but uh, was, was quite the lady. She'd give the, anybody in town that needed anything, she'd give them the shirt off her back. You know, she was just that kind of person. They took people in. She raised foster kids. She, she was a, a ball of fire, so. And they had, uh, what, nine children. Uh -huh. Wow. And there's, uh, I have an aunt uh, that is the only living one left. Uh -huh. All the rest of them are, have this, been deceased. Well, if, if there were nine children, how did the, how did your father come to have it out of and the other? Uh, well, he uh, owned a farm a mile and three quarters south of here. That's where I was born and raised. It was in Major County, which is just across the Alpha Alpha County line. And uh, when uh, my grandparents passed away. Of course, he was farming this because his brothers were, well, one of the brothers was a farmer up around Cherokee. One was a minister. One was a minister. Uh, one done custom farming, or custom cutting. cutting. Uh, one of them moved to Wichita and worked in the, at Boeing. Mm -hmm. uh, the girls, they, one of them went to California and got married out there. And then the other one stayed here, which she's still alive. Her name is Inez mm -hmm. uh, Marshall, mm -hmm. right? And she lives in the uh, uh, fellowship home in Fairview, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. But your dad was the only one that really was interested in mm -hmm. continuing yes, the farm. Yes, yes. So when they divided everything up, they sold it to him for $35,000 in 1979, yeah, wasn't it? Something like, like that. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. Might have been no, 
That yeah. would be before that because be we got married in 73. He owned it before I graduated high school. Mm -hmm. Probably 1969, I think, is when it, they sold it uh, to him. And, uh, of course, when he passed away, uh, we bought it from our mother. And uh, she lived to be about 88. Mm -hmm. My dad died at 70. Mm -hmm. And uh, she lived to be 88. And we have lived here 40 40, 40, years. 40 years now. We moved out here about six months after we got married. So, And you, and you got married when then? Uh, 73, 1973. So. At night. We got married at night. <laughs> In the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that have to be? <laughs> <laughs> so, did you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I have two brothers, an older and a younger. And they live, both of them live in Enid. Not interested in farming? Nope. No. Mm -hmm. they wouldn't and what's even better is our youngest son lives about five miles from here and he helps his dad farm. So, so we have one that's continuing that tradition of, of you know, making something from the soil, you know, the farming. You know, we're, we're just small farmers though. Was the farm originally 80 acres or 160? 160. 160. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And the house was, was right here where we're at. And several years ago, we dug a storm shelter. And when they were digging that out, uh, they found some of the brick from the old uh, dugout that was originally here. And I have one of the bricks uh, in my cabinet in there, but... Uh, this is this is where it all started, you know. And there was no when we moved up here, there was an old cellar out there, uh, and that's where his dad slept when they were kids. The boys would sleep down in the cellar because it was cool. Mm -hmm. So we ended up having to fill it in because it was you know crumbling and stuff. But the horse tank, there's a horse tank out there. The I'm sure you saw the windmill when you drove up. That's original to the farm. And then there was a, a milk house, and so the water would go from the, the windmill through the milk house to keep the milk cold, and it'd run into this big cement uh, horse tank out there. Mm -hmm. And it actually has great-grandpa Watson's initials in the year 1912, where he wrote it when they poured that, that stock tank. So it's, it's mm -hmm. pretty cool. But. So as far back as you can remember, what were some of the problems? The products, produce, and things that was uh, produced here on the farm. Well, here just south of where our house is, they had about a 20-acre patch of alfalfa, and the rest of it was pretty much wheat and cattle like we do now. Mm -hmm. uh, as sandy as the ground is around here, that's about all that you can raise. We can try milo and stuff, but without irrigation systems, it's it's almost a bust. It don't work very well. Where would they take their things to market? To Alleen. And that's just, what, two miles from? Four and a half. Four and a half. As the crow flies? Or? That's the yeah. crow flies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, but the, it used to blow really bad. And, and your dad talks about how when they planted the shelter belt out there, they did that as a, you know, a erosion measure. So that row of trees out there was planted by your dad when he was little? I don't or? think so. I don't well, remember when that, that house wasn't here mm -hmm. when, that, when they planted that. But mm -hmm. uh, it had to have been planted uh, before then because remember we found those mm -hmm. artifacts out there in mm -hmm. the shoulder belt of uh, the Civil War. The, the, we found a bayonet out there. Aline is considered on the Mason-Dixon line hmm. and we actually found a bayonet and it was re in relatively good shape mm -hmm. in that shelter belt out mm -hmm. there. His dad and the boys were out there exploring so. So. So it makes you wonder what happened here on this land you know that the stories that we don't know that you know probably somebody does but well, as a young child, would you come visit your grandparents here? Well, we only lived a mile and a half from them. 
and we've seen them about every day. We always had, uh, as long as they were alive, we always had Sunday dinner with them. And what would be the food? Uh, chicken and noodles. Homegrown chickens? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, homemade noodles. And my grandpa usually done the cooking on Sundays. Was was that the grandpa that would eat dessert first? No, that was on that the other, was the other that side. That was on the other side. <laughs> he had one grandpa that he always had dessert first, you know. Can you describe the house, that house to us? No, it actually set east and west. And uh, all on the north side were bedrooms. They had uh, three, it was a three bedroom home with one bath on the north side. The center bedroom had two beds in it, and it was, well, the biggest room in the house. And then as you came in the back door uh, was the wash room, a big cement uh, wash tub thing to wash up for dinner. As you walked into the kitchen just to the left of, of uh, as you walked in was where you went down into the cellar. Uh, the kitchen was not very big. In fact, this here was in the kitchen. And uh, then from there you went into the dining room and it's where my grandpa always sat in front of the old wood burning stove made his own cigarettes and of course my grandma had sat at the uh, at the dining room table and every day she would write what went on and I don't know whether we still have all that mm -hmm. stuff or not but uh, she she would have a daily diary of uh, what went on that day and who she seen and then the, they had actually a formal living room where they kept all of my grandpa's musical instruments. He, play, he played the banjo and the fiddle. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that other instrument was called. And then my grandma played the piano. And uh, of course they when electricity came available, they had the house uh, made for electricity and running water. Of course, when my dad was growing up, running water was to take a bucket out to the pump and pump it and run back to the house as fast as you could. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And how did they do bath tubs? Bath uh, time well, day, bath they... time in their day was in a galvanized tub, galvanized tub. which we have still. So, this is pretty cool. Until, until they put the bathroom in the house, you know. Mm -hmm. Of course, when the dugout was there, they didn't actually, I don't know whether they actually lived in the dugout, but I know my great-grandparents did. Mm -hmm. And it was like a little two-room thing made of brick with a uh, straw top and... Uh, of course, Dad did tell me during the uh, the Dust Bowl, which went on what in the 30s. 30s, he said they used to hang burlap sacks over the windows, wet them, and by nightfall they would be mud. That's how bad the dust was. Of course, actually it wasn't as bad here as it was, you know, further west, but it was still pretty bad. I remember the stories of when they built that, the shop out there. Um, everybody loved to come here because of the, the music and they had a, a barn dance out there. And, and so they played music and had all the neighbors come over because there were several Riles that lived around yes. here. The, his cousin, Marvel, your dad's cousin, Marvel, lived, what, a mile from where you grew up. Yeah, mom. Mom and a half. Yeah. So, how would they learn to play these? I really don't know. I guess just uh, 
probably just had a natural uh, feel to do it, I guess. You know, I don't, I never did ask. Have they moved here from the, your great grand great grandparents? They came here from uh, Ireland. Well, then that may that may have something to do with. Mm -hmm. This is where they came from, and my grandpa my grandpa Riles the Riles came from Germany. Because my grandmother was redheaded, and uh, how how they ended up meeting at that I do not know. But uh, I do know how my dad and mother met. Uh, my dad was shot in the war, and uh, he in in the, he was in the Korean War, wasn't he? Uh, or which, whichever one it was. I don't. Sometimes my mind don't work very well. But uh, uh, she only lived just. They went to actually went to school together at a county school which was just a mile east mm -hmm. of here. Round Grove. Uh, she yeah. lived, she lived uh, a mile north of there and he lived a mile west of the school. And uh, of course he always picked on her when they were in school, but when he went off to war, when he got shot and was in the hospital, she started riding to him. And that's kind of how they got together. And um, then they moved here, and, and we lived in a rent house south of here for uh, two years until they got their home built in 1952. So you were born when? I was born in 1941. 51. 51. <laughs> I know he's old. <laughs> He's not that old. <laughs> so they would have gotten married in the 40s sometime in the uh, 47. Yeah, that sounds right. 40, yeah. Because my brother was born in 49, my oldest brother. So that would make it World War II then. Probably yeah, right something. I, I'd say I can't. Yeah, I have to work backwards in order no, to figure it out. That's fine. See, you're <laughs> testing me. Yeah. <laughs> so. I have to work backwards. <laughs> and you graduated from high school? I graduated in the, from high school in... In 1970, from Alleyne, or from Alleyne, Alleyne. Cleo. Alleyne, Cleo. I went to uh, school at Cleo for where we lived down where I grew up. We were in the Cleo school district, and then when we moved, well, when they decided to take all the little county schools and make one. That's when uh, you were a senior. Or? No, that's when I was. A, well, actually, it was a junior. Because I was the second graduating class from Allen Cleo. Consolidated. Mm -hmm. And uh, they was 14 in our class. Wasn't a very big school. <laughs> Did you do 4-H? Yes, 4-H at Cleo. And then when we moved and did Allen Cleo, FFA. Mm -hmm. And FFA there. His dad always had a dairy, so you showed yeah. dairy cattle. 4-H. Well, then we should back up. Then, if he, your dad, did how many cows did he have at the dairy? Oh, uh, probably. I'm going to say about 30 head. And what were some of your chores? Milking cows. <laughs> <laughs> we did it for oh, probably till I was about 15. We milked them all by hand. And then uh, he got a uh, vacuum milker, and uh, we set that all up, and probably sped sped it up about twice as fast. And of course, when I was 15, I'm gonna say we probably milked about 12 cows. But uh, when he got the milking system, uh, he had a bulk tank. He sold. Uh, sold that milk to uh, the Watonga Cheese Factory and uh, he, he wanted to go grade A but then he would have had to have completely redone everything so he sold grade C milk which they made cheese and mm -hmm. other products out of it. They'd have a truck come and pick it up 
and uh, of course they used it for their own use and yeah I was a city girl when I married Ray and we have the actual cream separator that was passed down from his grandparents I think to to your parents and so his dad and mom taught me how to I actually we had milk goats when our kids were little and so we'd separate the cream and and do all that so so we have the actual cream separator that still works and his dad taught me all of that, you know, how to use it, how to make it work and stuff, which was was very cool. Did the dairy have a name? Did it have a name? No, no. Would you have to get up milk before school? Oh, yes. And when we got home from school. Twice a day? No. The rest of the time they had horses and played and didn't you? But you had to work the fields too. You yeah. Had a dark tractor and was your dad's primary source of income farming? Yes, but now since he was shot in uh, World War II, he did draw a government pension because he was disabled. Uh, he had very little use of his left leg. I mean, he could walk without crutches or stuff, but he. He had uh, a lot of pain in his left leg. Did your mother work to supplement him? No, she did you? not. She was strictly a housekeeper, which she probably did more work than. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We we raised uh, raised and butchered chickens and butchered our own pigs and cows and and. Uh, She'd go to town once in a while and buy a few staples, and that was about it. So. Well, had your grandfather worked off the farm, or was he his no. primarily farming? No, he, all he ever done was farm. Of course, my dad, all he farmed was to, was, well, when he really got started, uh, my grandpa was renting a couple extra farms, and this one. And he had what they called an old Twin City Minneapolis Moline tractor with steel wheels. And that's what he farmed with, which would pull about a three bottom, 314 plow. And uh, of course, my, when my dad was growing up, before my grandpa and yes got that tractor, they teaming horses. Uh, when they would uh, harvest, they was a, actually my other grandpa on the other side had a thrashing machine. And that's what his income was from. And they would park it at a field with the old endless belts. And my dad's job was to run the team and horses and the wagon and hauling the shocked wheat to the thrashing machine, pull it up there and then put it on into the thrashing machine. And he was probably maybe eight or nine years old, but that was his job. And one, one evening when he went to put the horses up, Something spooked him, and the barn door was only big enough for one horse at a time, but both of those horses got in through that door at the same time, which tore the wagon up, and uh, he had to fix it because he's the one that tore it up. So. And that actually, that corn crib out there used to be two corn cribs, and that's where they drive through to and hook the horses. Isn't that right? Yeah. And then they had a big barn. Yeah, that burnt down twice. <laughs> <laughs> when my dad was little, I'm going to say probably five or six, mm -hmm. uh, him and his two sisters were pretty close to the same age. And their job was to take care of each other. So the, the story was that they were out 
back behind the barn smoking corn cobs. <laughs> and somehow, don't know for sure whether the match got away from them or they decided somebody was coming and they throwed the corn cobs down. But anyway, the barn got caught on fire. And uh, my grandma Ryle always kept telling me that that my dad come running and hollering, call the police, call the police. <laughs> <laughs> the barn's on fire. <laughs> call the police. <laughs> but uh, then in what nineteen? The boys were. What was nineteen? Almost fifty years later. Mm -hmm. Of course, they rebuilt the barn. They they rebuilt the barn, and it was here, sitting here when we lived here. And almost 50 years to the date, it burnt down again. Mm -hmm. It was electrical. Electrical. Right the electrical kids had fire. some show lambs. They all all our kids have been involved with 4-H and FFA, and so we had some lambs in there, and something electrical started the fire so it burned down. And yeah, almost I say almost mm -hmm. fifty years to the to the date that it burned down when when my dad burned it down. Well when when something like that happens is there's not a fire station close enough. Well there station. wasn't when he was little but we did call Alleen mm -hmm. and they come out and made sure the other buildings didn't Yeah, um, made yeah. sure the other stuff didn't It's all volunteer fire departments. So. You know, didn't burn down so Best thing when that happens is just let it burn and you don't have near as much junk to pick up. <laughs> but, uh, then, we re then we rebuilt about half of it so that the kids would have a place for their animals and stuff. Where would you have to get your lumber? Uh, well, now, when they built the barn the first time it burnt down, they went up somewhere around Cherokee. That's where my grandma Ryle's sister lived. And they farmed up there around Cherokee. Uh, there was some buildings up there that somebody had, you know, left the farm or whatever. And they actually disassembled the barn up there and brought it down here and re erected the barn. So that's where that one came, the one that burned down when we were here. I don't know what the one looked like when it burnt the first time. Didn't your grandpa have a like a sawmill or something? We had that big saw blade. Mm, well, they were just to cut. Just a big saw to just, cut. Just to cut on lumber. lumber and mm -hmm. a few things. But I don't, there wasn't enough trees around here to do that. Mm -hmm. Much of it. So from the rental house, then y'all moved here. Oh, no, you built a house. Your yeah. parent, your parents. My parents built a house a mile and a half. a mile and a half south of here. Out of the used all the wood out of the school that him and mom went to school in. Mm -hmm. They tore it down. That was called the Round Grove Schoolhouse. They tore it down and built their house down there. My mother had one sister and uh, she married a gentleman that was a carpenter by trait, which he farmed also, but he was a carpenter kind of by trait. And him and my dad built that house down there. Is it uh, still standing? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. It's not in real good shape, no. but it's still standing. It's been empty a long time. And what was going on in the house that was on this property? Your grandparents still lived here? Uh, well, until, I don't remember the date that uh, they actually, of course, my grandpa passed away at about 70. My grandmother was what, probably about 88, mm -hmm. something like she that. Uh, she was in the home in Carmen when she passed away. My grandpa passed away here. Um, then uh, she lived here, I think, about a year, and then moved to the 
old folks home. And of course right then was about the time my dad purchased this farm from them mm -hmm. and the, his, his siblings. And then he sold the house and it is sitting in Cleo Springs, Oklahoma. Moved it. From, from here. Mm -hmm. Yes, from here. Mm -hmm. Which they've remodeled and done some things to it down there. But it is, it is actually sitting in Cleo Springs. Well, he always said he didn't think uh, Ray or his brothers would ever get married. So, you know, they <laughs> <laughs> then we got married, what, a couple of years later, wasn't it? Yeah, something like something that. Like, yeah. But that house was, it needed a lot of work. But, uh, but when we moved up here, we moved a single wide, single wide, 10 by 50 trailer, 10 by 50 trailer house up here. And that his uh, grandma from his maternal grandmother hadn't lived in until she. It was probably the hottest summer that ever happened around here, and we didn't have air conditioning. We had a water cooler in the dining, in the living, living room, and that's where we slept because <laughs> it was so hot. But uh, then we eventually have this. It was funny because the other day he got a social security statement, you know, and it was like when we had in 80 something, when we had three kids, our annual income was like $8,500 annual income, you know, and of course I stayed home and far helped farm and, you know, and didn't work. We made that decision to, you know, to, to be a full-time mom and, and. So we canned and we did everything. Didn't yeah. We? Well, my mother did too. Mm -hmm. She canned ev everything. Well, she taught me everything. Yeah. Everything. There's a large garden then. Yes. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah. Would you have to help with that? Oh yeah. Uh, we raised tomatoes and potatoes and onions, carrots, turnips. I'm trying to think, but of course. Uh, until I got married to Joyce, I didn't know what okra was. <laughs> and I didn't grow any turnips, because so, <laughs> I knew what they were. <laughs> I like raw turnips, but I don't like them cooked. So you had to learn how to hoe pretty early. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That and pull weeds and keep the chickens out. Well, when it was time to slaughter the chickens, who did we do that? We did. But who's we? The kid, my, your kids, my your brothers mother? and mother and father. We would we were the chicken butchers. We would uh, heat the water up, scald or of course uh, kill the chickens and heat them. You know, heat the water up and scald them so that you could pull the feathers off. And. Uh, my mom would uh, we'd put them in a cool tank of water and she'd sit there and clean them and then our job was to cut them up. You taught me how to cut up a chicken. <laughs> yeah. I'm a farm I was a city girl. Yeah. In fact, we, we used to butcher what, about 250 chickens a year when Joyce and I got married. When the kids were little, yeah. When the kids were little. Because it was a sell. production. It, no. Yeah, oh, and the kids hated it, oh my gosh, but you know. It's the way life was, you know. They if they wanted to do new baseball mitt or whatever, you get out there and you put your chickens, you know. You you did your part. That's you had to, you know. There wasn't anybody else, you know. So and that was our food. So. And then what would you do? What would you sell them? The, the chicken. We we just always had people that were just you know lined up. I could have sold twice as many as I did, but you know I. We'd keep, sell about fifty of them. Mm -hmm. And then the rest we'd eat. Of course, we'd give. I mean, we'd give our parent, my, our parents, you know, chickens mm -hmm. to eat. Yeah. Well, your mom and dad always come up and help. Yeah, they'd and come and help. They were so close to our kids, and that, especially our youngest. He spent from the time he could. Uh, by the time he was potty trained, he was with Grandpa every day. You know, Claude would come up here and sit around and and talk a little bit, and then him and Mason would go. They'd go out and Feed take cattle. care of the cattle and just, you know. So he knows as many of the stories as the rest of us. You know, that's part of the problem. Everybody loses the history, you know, and 
that's why I was so excited to be able to do this, was to have some of it recorded. I've heard some a few things today that I didn't know, you know, so. Was there a particular time of year when the chickens would be? Uh, we'd always do it in the summer. Mm -hmm. And then spring with the yeah. in the fall? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was your mother or grandmother involved with home demonstration clubs, homemaker clubs? No, not too much. I don't know that they had a lot of them back then. Uh, of course, with us being in 4-H, they were involved in, in whatever our 4-H projects were, you know. Um, they were real involved in the American Legion. Yeah, that and the church, the Christian church in Alley. Mm -hmm. Because the really American Legion is the kind of Ryle yeah. Legion. It was named after the Riles. So he always, your dad always led the parade, and that was a really big, you know, because he served his country and, you know, and paid, paid a price for it, you know. But. Um, in the First Christian Church, we got married in the same church that his parents got married in, which is, oh, it wasn't. Boy, you're telling Phil. Oh, now. I didn't mean to. Oh, <laughs> I guess we, I don't know we the caught story. You, we caught you in the lie. I'm busted. <laughs> <laughs> Who told so, you that story? Uh, I guess I just made it up. I don't know. That's what I always thought. Are they you got, sure? They got mar married in Medicine Lodge. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Dang, we'll put her on the spot wheel. Really? Yeah. Where'd yeah. you get married at now? Our daughter got married in the same there church. We got no. married in. Okay. <laughs> I knew there was some continuity there somewhere. <laughs> so, that's right. They ran off to Medicine Lodge, didn't they? Or, well, they really didn't run off. Well, they went on a train or something, didn't they, up there? They probably went on horseback. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad told me a lot of stories. A lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> um, a he lot was of, a mess. Oh my a lot gosh. of work. True. Either I'll tell you, he could sit there and and serious. You even knew it wasn't true, but he could tell a story, and you would believe everything he said. Well, and. I came in as a very naive city girl, and here he's telling me all this stuff. And, oh my gosh, did they play tricks on me? Because they didn't have any sisters. I was the first girl in the family, you know. Well, how did you two meet? Uh, it was an accident. <laughs> it was. I think I served him a hamburger. <laughs> I moved. I grew up in Laverne, Oklahoma, and we moved. My dad moved to Fairview, and there was a little called Queen's Kitchen, little. Uh, it was a restaurant, but it had like the Sonic does. It had the little telephone, you know, that you could order. And he worked in Fairview at a manufacturing plant. And he'd come in there during the summer and eat lunch. And I was where I worked there from when I was a senior, and, and then through my first year of college. And he had this really cool car, you know, so like a 1970 Dodge Demon. Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Give me one. <laughs> oh. Of course, it was almost a short marriage because he tried to teach me to drive that and it had a clutch in it, you know. <laughs> but it was like a competition clutch, so you couldn't, I couldn't even hold it down with two feet, much less. Oh, well, you could hold it down, but it was when okay, you well. went to it up, that spring in there would. It was boom. It started out. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, we got, when I was in high school, I just uh, played basketball and studied and stuff. And so we went back for my fifth year class reunion and I got married and I had three kids and I was milking goats and butchering chickens. And <laughs> all my friends were like, oh my God, what did you do to her? You know? <laughs> but I loved it. And it was... So when did you get married? You graduated from high school in 70, you said. Mm -hmm. 73. August 10th, 1973. Did she get that right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what I have trouble remembering is her birthday. I never can remember whether it's the 10th of October, or I mean the 8th of October or the 7th. So 
So I just buy her two presents and then that way I'm covered. Oh, whatever. <laughs> some years I get good presents, some years I get nothing. Ding, ding. That's One year for my anniversary, I got like an old watermelon that had been in the back of a pickup. <laughs> hey, I always bought her something. And it was never the same. It never thing. the same. One year I got five milk goats for, yeah, that was I think Mother's Day or something. Like that. Oh. But, <laughs> so yeah, it was, it's a, but one thing I have never bought her, and this is the truth, I've never bought her flowers. Mm. Ever. Not that she don't deserve them. It's just that I've never done anything wrong to ever have to buy her flowers. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, I don't think I want to touch that. I know, I don't think I'd go there with no, that no, no. Hey, 41 years, we made it that long. Well, when the, the farm came into your ownership, did you start making changes on some of the, what was grown? No. No. It, it's just what works here. Mm -hmm. You know, the options are kind of limited. I, I have tried soybeans uh, about five years ago, and it actually cost me $5,000 more to grow the the soybeans than what I made, so we didn't do that. Uh, we've tried Milo a couple years, and actually this year was the first time we ever got a Milo crop. And it made 40 bushel. Which is oh, real good for you. Which is real good for dry land Milo around here. Our wheat crop this year was the worst that we have ever harvested in our lives which averaged three bushel to the acre of what we farm. Just drought. And it was the just drought a just killed us. Uh, we do a lot of what people call, I guess, crabgrass. Most people think that's a weed, but cattle love it. So we have our own hay business and, and uh, we put up a lot of crabgrass hay for our cattle during the during the winter, and uh, then we plant feed on a few places that we kind of want to kill the stickers and the weeds and stuff. We'll plow that up and plant sowed feed. So how many acres are you managing these uh, days? About 1,200. That's why I say we're just small, we're just small farmers. We own three. We own, uh, we own three, three quarters. Three quarters. But uh, we're, just, we're just small farmers. Was there a point at any time that you thought you would lose the, this original oh. 60? <laughs> or your yes, in what, 1998? 1998. Or yes, when I got out of high school and I would stayed at home with the kids. And, and that was our choice so that they could do the 4-H and the basketball and stuff like that. And, uh, the last one had graduated and it was so, we couldn't even have electricity and food in the same week, you know, so I got a job as a receptionist for an oil field company in Enid and... Well, you drove the school bus part, I drove the school bus part-time. Part -time. You drove the school bus part-time. Got a job over there and... And made, made ceramics and sold at Christmas time for Christmas money for the kids. And, but no, there was 19, I think it was 1998, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. That, oh, man. Was it weather related? Or oh, yes. Mm -hmm. That, that in, interest was 22% interest. And it was... It was just tough. It took, it took a pretty good toll on us. But we came through it, and of course, Joyce has a very good job. And uh, if it wasn't for that, we probably wouldn't have made it for me. What are your, your thoughts on crop insurance? Well, it's good, but yet it's so expensive that... And after you have, just like, you know, we were in the... Was it called the El Nina here or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, when it's dry? Uh, the crop base in Alfalfa County is 33 bushel to the acre for wheat. But when you have five bad years, 
it drops a certain percentage every year. And see, our wheat base right now is probably only about 20. But you pay the same amount for what it was at 33. And of course, if it wasn't for crop insurance, it would have been really bad this year. You know, I mean, it's, we didn't get a lot for it. But like I say, with getting a decent Milo crop, it kind of evened out. But uh, I have always had crop insurance, and I'm going to probably always still have crop insurance. Because you just never know. Did your father have it too? Uh, when my father farmed, you could buy crop insurance through the federal government at $50. Uh, I believe it was fifty dollars uh, per quarter, and what that would do was guarantee you uh, maybe, and, and I don't know for sure, but it would guarantee you like about a ten bushel crop. Of course, they didn't have the means of buying better fertilizer, better like OSU, we buy a, we don't buy it from OSU because it's way too expensive. But uh, we will buy a small amount and plant something and then we harvest that and that's our seed wheat for next year. Uh, but uh, he put some of the farm the farms in CRP, didn't he? Yeah, and then when uh, of course he had a he had a bad time in what about the time we were married, wasn't it? Probably seventy. In seventy three, mm -hmm. he ended up putting these farms in the CRP program because he couldn't make it. They would guarantee him he got it signed up for fifty dollars an acre. Of course, he was getting close to retiring. And uh, back then, uh, well, they only paid you on your on your base farm acres. They didn't pay you for the full 160 unless it was all broke out. But of these two farms, there's what 170 acres of farm ground. Mm -hmm. And at fifty dollars an acre, and of course, he also had two oil wells that wasn't producing very much. He might have got uh, $2,000 a year out of each one of them. But that combined with his uh, CRP payment and his disability. disability payment, he kept the payments made on the farm and they made a living. You didn't need as much back then, you know. That's what we were talking the other day about when we didn't have any income when the kids were little, but we didn't do without, you know, if, if you wanted jam, you bought, you went and picked blackberries or wild plums and you just, you may do, you know, you just, I don't think we ever shorted our kids or did without anything, but no. we may do with just what we had, you know. We didn't. It's, it's just now that everything is is so expensive. The equipment in particular, yes. Oh yeah, there are two hundred and eighty seven thousand dollar tractor sitting out there. Have you gone no till yet? Oh no, we tried that and it broke. <laughs> doesn't doesn't no. work. Our, our, unless we didn't we tried it about four years and it just it just did not work for us. Uh, some people have made it work for them. But around here to control the weeds and the stickers, you just about have to plow or tear it up good enough that you can get a decent seed bed. It's so sandy, you know, it's all, all sand around Of course, here. you also farm it so that you don't want it to blow. I hate for my ground to blow. But uh, it has happened a few years. But uh, we try. We even bought a no-till drill, and what we fi we finally got rid of that uh -huh. because it just it just did not work for us. 
plus $287,000 tractor. Was that a hard to swallow to purchase that? Not for me, it was, it was for her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one with the steady income, you know. So. But it does help to have a spouse work, you know, and then at least you know you can pay the electric bill this month, and it, it's not, it hasn't been the struggle that it was before. So um, I ended up very fortunate. Mm. And this, this farm's paid off. It's ours. Yeah, this, it's, the house, the farm is, is all paid for. And that's, that was our. Our goal, and then our, our next goal was to have three farms. We have three kids, so when we're done, then they'll each have something that, that we can pass on to them, you know. So, and we have our three farms. They're not all paid for. The other two aren't all paid for, but. Right yeah. now, the price of land is, is just, it has skyrocketed. We paid, when we bought this, we paid $15,000 for it. For 160 for acres? For 160 acres. So, so why do you think the price of land has gone through the roof? Because of uh, the oil boom. That and uh, the, there are some very big farmers, and I, I, I'm not, I don't want this to sound like I'm talking bad about them, uh, I'm not, but they have the mineral rights on all of their farms because they're older. And when you sold a farm back in the 70s, the minerals went with it. Now you sell a farm, you can keep the minerals. Well, with all the new, is it called horizontal drilling mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. whatever? Uh, they have hit some very, very good oil wells around here. Now, we haven't seen the actual checks, but you hear say of like a million dollars a month wow. on some elite... No, not on our land. No, not on ours. <laughs> no, on elite farms, okay? Well, to keep from paying so much taxes, you go buy another farm. Well, when you have 10 farmers that are fighting over one farm, from, well, we bought that, we purchased that farm south for $110,000. Uh, of course, it got sold out from under us for various reasons. Yeah, it was out of the family. It was for out of the years, family for a few years. And then we got it bought back. when the guy so, passed away, his daughters decided they wanted to sell it, so our goal was to buy it back since it was in the family. But uh, we we thought we'd give a lot for it. But right now, 160 acres around here goes for anywhere from 450,000 to 600. Wow. Well, we've seen this great boom, especially in Alfalfa County, with increased oil and gas production. Has that impacted the land you own right now? No, we don't. No. The only minerals we own is on this place here. Okay. The others, we don't own the mineral underneath them. Have they Have they drilled any more on your land? No, uh -huh. no. They've stopped about they stopped a mile about north. They've stopped about a mile north here. <laughs> How convenient. I know. I know. I like, but now I will say, and I, and I don't know for a fact, but last year, before the or two years before they drilled up north of us up here, our oil checks for a year was about two thousand dollars. Now that was a year. Since they drilled them up there, we have not gotten an oil check. Hmm. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's either done or the horizontal has taken what ours was at. You know, I don't, I don't know. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, we have not got an oil check in two years. Have you noticed a change in the community since this recent boom again? Uh, yeah, because I don't know half the people in Aline. <laughs> I mean, people's moved away. Uh, most of them that have come back in 
are just the oil boom. Uh, Chesapeake and Sand Ridge are uh, big competitors that have brought in, not necessarily brought in, but people have moved in to work for them. Uh, I think they're good, good companies, you know. I mean, it seems like they take pretty good care of their employees. But the like the businesses in that lane have kind of yeah, gone in. They're, they're, used to have a grocery store, it doesn't anymore. And yeah, it uh, has a post office. Has has a post office and a mechanic shop, and that's that's about it. They have a senior citizen deal and the high school. They just built a new high school about five years ago. Uh -huh. But a lot of the kids, like you know. Two of our kids have, have left, and most of the other kids that were our kids' age have gone on, yeah. you know, somewhere else, you know, looking to make a living. Because if you don't farm, you don't work until the oil, you know, came in and has given more opportunities. But uh, but it's still basically just a farming community, you know. So. And it's hard to it's hard to get uh, good help. Mm -hmm. Because all of the good help has went to places, and, and I'm not saying anything bad about them, but they went to the oil field because they're starting out at $25 an hour. Mm -hmm. yeah. And most people around here, about 10 bucks an hour for a farmhand is pretty good money. Because you usually give them a place to live, and you feed them, you know, but... It's tough to get someone to work for you for ten dollars an hour. But I work in the oil field, and you know that's my, my business. So, in a roundabout way, the oil field has been very good to us. To, oh yeah, you know, no, to, I, I just you know to allow us to do that. So, do you have do you hire extra help during harvest time? We finally found a couple of young boys. In fact, we sent them to uh, their their younger. Uh, we sent them to tractor driving safety school this year. To the OSU Extension. To OSU Extension deal. Along with our granddaughter. Along, along with our granddaughter. <laughs> and uh, what that does is the OSU Extension goes through and shows them tractor safety stuff. Yeah. I don't know all what it pertained to because I didn't. I really didn't ask them too much other than that they drive a they drive a tractor through a course and uh, then they have to back it through the course and uh, I guess my granddaughter was about in third place <laughs> and the two boys that were helping me was first and second so uh, they're they're they live close to here. Yeah, they just live a mile and a half away from us. So they help them. And they're days they're homeschooled, and uh, they're just really nice young men that really want to learn. But uh, their biggest thing is is when you say let's take a tractor, they fight to see who gets in it. <laughs> Do you trust them with the two hundred eighty seven thousand oh, yes. dollar one? Oh yes. Have to. You have to. And your granddaughter mm -hmm. is no, your daughter. Granddaughter. She helps them. Interested, um, interested in farming. Oh no. Yeah. She she does want to be a veterinarian though. So. But she her favorite place in the world is the farm. So they she loves to come out here. And, yeah, she has a we had a, a cow that had uh, lost or a cow that had died uh, here okay. six six years ago okay. I guess it was about like that. And uh, we had a ball calf, and uh, she uh, just made her day to get to feed that calf. Well, to this day, she can walk out in a herd of cows out here and holler, lady, and that cow will come up to her. She has put a halter on it. Mm -hmm. She has dressed her up in a dress. <laughs> She has taken a, a blanket out there, and when she's laying down, she has laid with the cow. Mm -hmm. She's laid on top of her. So she's, granddad better take care of that cow. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's not one that's going to town. You know? <laughs> that's going to stay. It's but pretty it's sad. actually it? turned out to be probably the best cow we've ever had on this place. Mm -hmm. We're we're just like his family. When when you were growing up, we're very very close, and and we're our family is like that now. The kids love to come here. They love to come to the farm and. The little boys came at Labor Day, wasn't it? We picked apples off our tree out here, and we made an apple pie together. They're two and four, and so we did did it from start to finish, you know. And well, Ray, did you always expect to be a farmer when you were gonna when you got out of high school? Did you plan? Oh, I don't know. It just kind of seemed when Joyce and I got married. That's what we wanted to do. I really didn't have any expectations of of doing that. Of course, when I, I tell you, right, to be truthful, when I graduated high school, graduated in May of 70, in July, in July of 1970 is when the lottery draft came out. And, uh, a lot of a lot of kids got the student deferment deal where they could go ahead and finish school, and I took my chances, you know. To I mean, if I'm going to go, I might as well go. I wasn't going to enlist, but if if my number come up, I was going to go. And luckily, my number was 361. So, I should have never went to college <laughs> because it became just a big party deal. And uh, But he worked outside. Oh yeah, I worked, I worked at Waldon Manufacturing for 27 years. So he'd Fairview. work and then we'd farm. Work some more. Yeah. yeah, we'd farm on weekends uh, or after, after he got off work. So it was a struggle to keep the farm, you know, and stuff, and, but. But then I got Votech, Votech, went to Votech for mechanics and, uh, uh, machine, for, uh machine, machinist. yeah, and a machinist, and that's what I, I did down at Waldon was, was a machinist, and the last seven years I was there, I was the plant superintendent. But it also gave him a lot of skills that we've used on the farm, you know, the because he can make anything. Yeah, you know, learn to weld and, and mm -hmm. a lot of stuff down there. So. And they were very good people to work for. Well, yeah. I know it's hard to ask you what a typical day is on a farm today, but for you today, what's a what's a typical day like? I fed the cats. Yeah. <laughs> It's that time of year, you know. And so if we were in harvest season, what would it be like? Well, uh, probably to the field about, oh, seven o'clock, I suppose. Grease up the machines, blow the, the air filters out and the radiator and fill them up with fuel. And depending on how much humidity there was, hopefully get started cutting about 11 o'clock. And if you can, you go as long as you can. Of course, the elevators usually close about 10 at night. So you always try to uh, have the last load dumped so that you can keep cutting. Uh, then that of course, when it's around here, when it's time to harvest, it's time to cut. You know, you don't want to dilly-dally around. And the same way with planting. Uh, when the weather's right, that's when you need to plant. Now this year we did about half of our ground and waited until we got some more rain because it just got too dry. And that that we actually planted later looks better than that that we planted early because it came up better. But uh, then you have cattle, take care of those. Of course, that's when Joyce and I kind of go on vacation is after we're done. Oh, or I say vacation, take off and go somewhere. After everything's planted. After everything's you know. planted. Yeah. 
because the cattle are in, we just wean calves, right? Yeah, we so just wean calves here. There's not as many about three cattle weeks to take ago. care of, and the crops in, and it's kind of a good time to. We try to, you know, I always said if you don't have a, a good marriage, you don't have a good family, you know, and so we've always tried to. Not that we've always gone. When did you say that? <laughs> <laughs> Back when I was getting married in the long church. No, no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. She may need to get you flowers. I know. <laughs> <laughs> nah, not happening. No, not happening. So. <laughs> How do you keep up with um, government programs? <laughs> well... Just like this year, they have changed some stuff. And uh, they have seminars. They have seminars that you can go to. And this new program, I'm not sure how it's going to work, but there is one November the 25th in Woods County. And there is one December the 11th, I think is what the they told us at the FSA office on the 11th that we have to decide out of, I think, three different. It's either a cash thing for your crop or acres or something. I'm not sure, but they have, and I'm not sure who puts it on. I don't know whether OSU Extension puts it on or whether it's an insurance company or what. But, uh, but the FSA office is good. Oh yeah, yeah. Good relationships the, with those the, people. The, they girl, the girls up there at Alpha Alpha County keep pretty good tabs on everything. Uh, of course, that's our home county. We farm in Major County too, but uh, our home office is in Alpha Alpha County, so that's where all the government money comes from. Uh, which that I think is now no longer if I understood it until you sign up on this new program mm -hmm. so uh, we'll have to make some kind of a decision of which way we want to go and I'm not sure what the, what it's going to be this year because we haven't went to that one mm -hmm. but uh, the government programs are set up on your wheat base uh, on what they pay and it does help. Of course, like here in the in the sand country, the wheat base is not as high as it is in Cherokee because it's better ground. It's not as high as it is in Alva because it's better ground. You know, I mean, it's uh, the more fortunate, you know. But it's like my grandpa always told his brother-in-law who farmed up around Cherokee. He said, if I want to get a drink of water, he said, I can just go over here and get a drink. Up there, they had they had to haul water because the water was so jippy, you couldn't drink it. Mm -hmm. So we had great water, and that was something Grandpa yeah. put a big value on, you mm -hmm. know, was having the... Well, that kind of got off the government program deal, but no, it's, I, I don't know yet. It's, it's a meeting that we'll have to go and decide what we want to do for the next five years. Well, everything's so complicated, you know, because to buy chemical to spray our land, he's a chemical, he's got a applica private applicator's license, and you, the government regulations have changed the way you farm. You have to understand all these regulations and what's changing to, to keep up on it. Even with your crop insurance yeah. and stuff, it changes. So you have to depend on the people that are, you know, providing that information for for their help. How do you keep records? Well, <laughs> it's a drawer. I have a drawer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's where everything goes and at the towards the end of the year, in fact, Joyce always helps. I'm not a computer whiz. But uh, she she'll set stuff up and then I key everything that we do into the computer and makes a printout, and that, I guess, is our records. How did your father do it? Any idea? My mother did it, actually. They had a, uh, of course, he was with what was called at the time the Farm Home Administration, which was F, 
FM, FMHA yeah. or something like that. And uh, they would give him, or well, actually, didn't, they didn't give him, but you have a book you have to fill out every month. And uh, he found uh, the calendar that had the little pouches in it for each month. And that's where they would put all of their bills and deposits for the month because they were pretty strict about your book work. Now, since we do not have federal loans, we don't have to worry about keeping that record other than for our taxes and our investment purposes. Mm -hmm. his, but his dad sold Pioneer Seed for a lot of years. Yeah, quite a few years. And so he had that book work to keep up with as well. So that helps supplement the farm yeah. income. So. And then your grandfather had a tea. Dude. Well, now, I don't know. I honestly don't. Did he trust the banks? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, of course, like right now, you know, uh, you go buy groceries, you know, you might not like one store, so you go to a different one, and that's kind of like the banks are around here now. Mm -hmm. But with the oil boom happening, they are wanting you to come in and see it now. In fact, I received some letters from Enid Banks. When we bought, when we bought our farm over here, east of here, uh, we uh, are now with farm credit of Western Oklahoma, which is in Alva, Woodward. Mm -hmm. uh, they have one in Kingfisher and they're all tied together. But it's a low interest uh, loaning, lo uh, loaning institution and they actually beat the interest rate of what banks do. But when we purchased that farm, that last farm, you would, it was like a pack of wolves. You know, well, you know, here you are buying a farm. You, you want us to loan you the money to do that? No. Where was you at 10 years ago? I mean, when, when we really needed help, no one wanted to help you. And if they did, the interest rate was so bad that, of course, that's decided by the federal government, I think, the interest rates, but... Well, now with that oil checks, a lot of people going in and paying off their No, they're paying, their they're paying off so their, their notes. It's, it's hurting these small-town banks. In fact, there's a... Well, the reason I know it... Well, I don't know it for a fact. My son banks in Alva, and... Uh, Actually, the, the gentleman that works with him is a distant cousin, but uh, he's really helped my son get started. And they are looking for people to borrow money because, like I say, the oil boom has hit up there. People have just walked in and deposited their checks and say, here, pay off that loan. Which I would like to be able to do that, you know. I know I'll never win the lottery, so. They just need to come a little further. <laughs> I know, just bring a little coast further south, you know. So, but, but uh, you know, it'd be nice to have an income like that that would pay things off. But you know, we're okay too. You yeah, know? we're not. Um, we got this this land secured. I can we can live on it till we're both gone and. Then it won't matter, you know. <laughs> It'd be somebody else's problem, you know. But. The way the way my dad always told me, he said, "If you want something, you got to work hard enough to get it." And I think we've worked pretty hard for what we have. And I've never really wanted a lot, other than just to make sure I keep it. Like I say, in 1998, we thought we were going to lose everything. Mm -hmm. it, it was it was that close. Mm -hmm. We find we finally found what was the name of that inst that loaning institute? Litton, no, something like that, out of Texas. And how we found that, I don't know. But they loaned us fourteen thousand dollars, 
and then at fourteen thousand dollars kept this farm and we're it wasn't this it was an old this old house set here we just remodeled this okay there's no house in here and uh, we made monthly payments to them for like about what five six years and then Joyce of course with her job moved up rather quickly and uh, we paid them off and then we never borrowed any money on it again but uh, no this this was just what like a little three bedroom home here and it's now a five bedroom with three baths and they say when your kids leave you can downsize they just come back and bring more <laughs> with them you know so we'll have them when they come home we'll have them all over the place you know and we'd probably been better off to have just tore it down and built a new one it cost us about that much i guess but there wasn't anything here we wanted to change mm -hmm. now we did change the kitchen around uh Knocked out a wall. Knocked out a wall. But the, knocked, knocked but the kids are like, stuff, Mom, you like all this old antique stuff? Why would you get rid of the house that we grew up in? You know, it's got all the memories and stuff. So, uh, but that, all those memories from his great grandparents, you know, all the way down that we're passing on to our grandkids, you know, the stories and stuff that, that is lost in so many places now, you know. In fact, we were, we were, really upset the shop sitting out here was you know Joyce talked about my grandparents building that and then having a dance in it well it got over the years uh, wondering well do we put money into it and fix it you know what what do we do so we finally of course after we got our house redone what, a couple years ago when uh, we've saved up enough money we decided we wanted to fix that garage and uh, so we had the carpenters that done the house come and look at it and we told them that we wanted it original just almost like that but we wanted the outside to look like the house the hardy plank and the roof and all that to look like the house so they uh, uh, commenced to tear off some boards. Well, <laughs> I think every two before in it had been spliced two or three times because that's the way they built things back there. I guess, you know, if, if you didn't have enough money to buy a board, you, you scabbed one on. So Joyce was, thought it was you in Idaho then it's or there. something? Yeah. Uh, I, she called one night and I told her, I said, well, it's going to cost more to remodel it, to fix it, than it is to tear it down and start over. So, unfortunately, we tore it down. We kept the cement. We, yeah, the We've cement. We've got the old workbench that was in there when but, we put back in. And... Uh, we built a lot better, sturdier building, I think. And we would have never seen any of the old wood anyway that was in it, so we ended up tearing it down. And we just did that while here mm -hmm. about three That's months ago. That's just now getting done, so. But, but keeping what we can and, and preserving it, you know, and, and but still making it a really nice farm. That's what your dad would have liked, you know, and, and your grandparents as well. It's, to, it's, I think, we think it's one of the nicest places, you know, around. and. Just nothing fancy, just good farm folks, you know, just go home. So. Well, so it's, it's hard to keep old buildings in shape. You can drive, you can drive mm -hmm. around the country and see that on these old barns, mm -hmm. you know, because you could end up putting tons of money into it and then you still have an old barn. Mm -hmm. And the windmills, we've noticed some of them are in better shape than others, too. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Well, this one here, uh, it's been a long time since it's worked. In fact, that was, there was a, uh, that was where the well was drilled, even for the house. There, it was set up so that it pumped, and then they had a, 
an electric deal in there to suck water out too. I don't remember how it was set up. And they always had them in pits. And of course the snakes and everything else get in them. Uh, and then when you have a water, then when you have a water leak, you even have two or three foot of water in there, and that's not good either. But uh, we did not want to get rid of the windmill. But the head up there on top is a I forget who who made it, but you can't buy them anymore. Now you can buy a new head and stuff to put up there, but we're not pumping water out of it, so the tail deal still works to tell you what direction the wind's coming out of. And you use it for that? Basically, yeah. <laughs> How often do you check your weather? Uh, with the TV. Use the mesonet any? Nope, I don't. Does hard freeze hurt hurt any? Or uh, no, we no, were we were good. pretty prepared for this year. Uh -huh. You know. The weed is just good for the weed. I mean, it's normal cycle. Well, it, it ha yeah. It's yeah. It's not at a time when it'll hurt it. Cause that's just, just in the spring spread. after it joints it hurts it. Mm -hmm. that, so. That's when it hurts it the worst is in the spring. Do you have a favorite time on the farm, season wise or time of day, either one? No, oh, not really. I don't think. Maybe dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your tractor doesn't have headlights? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> we used to work long past dark. Yeah, we but, did. But, but we've kind of, you know. Of course, with, with uh, bigger and better stuff, it doesn't take us as long to, to uh, put in a day's work, I guess. Well, what kind of tractor did your dad have? Yeah. My, oh, I, we'd started to talk about that. My, my dad, uh, my grandpa had a, of course he did with the horse and, and the plow and, and the whole works with, you know, horses. And uh, then he bought that Twin City Minneapolis Moline tractor that had the lug, had the metal wheels on it. And I don't remember what year it was, but they converted them over converted it over to rubber tires. And then my dad bought a GB M&M tractor, which was on propane. And that's what him and my grandpa farmed together with. And in 1950, about 1954, my dad bought a brand new Massey Ferguson 50. And uh, that's what he, it was mainly a three-point tractor, and that's what he helped supplement in with when they got rid of that old Minneapolis Moline tractor, that Twin City. And uh, he farmed with that for till 1967. And in 1967, he bought a brand new John Deere 4020. Switch brands. Switch brands. Mm -hmm. and and we've driven green ever since. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's been green ever since. In fact, our first tractor we owned was a 63 model 5010. No cab. No cab. Yes. Well, it had that canopy. Well, deal that's not it. a cab. <laughs> that's a shade. <laughs> no, no air conditioning. No. no. <laughs> Well, the 4020 didn't have air conditioning either. Uh, back then, you didn't, you, man, if you had an air conditioning tractor, you was, you was way above everybody else. But, uh, no, I went around the field a lot of times on that M&M &M GB with a little four bottom plow. Uh, how, what would you be, keep it, how would you keep your mind busy during those, those laps? Sing to yourself. Sing? I guess. We should have him sing for it. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> not actually, a good idea. Actually, <laughs> I do remember one 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 summer. Uh, I was I was plowing up here. I don't remember what I was plowing for my grandpa or for, for dad. I don't remember for sure. But uh, it was towards the evening. It was it was summertime. It was towards the evening. And it was an old trip plow. You had to pull the the 
the uh, rope to trip it out of the ground. But Dad told me since it was slate, you know, just don't worry about tripping it and finish up this much of it, you know. So I was driving around fields, you know, and all of a sudden I come up on this plow sitting over here in the field. Well, I looked back and I'd lost my plow. <laughs> <laughs> I drove all the way around that field. <laughs> Didn't know you were missing a The hitch had broke. <laughs> So needless to say, I hurry up and get that tractor around over there so it don't look like I drove all the way. Of course, I never thought about the tracks in the furrow, you know. And of course, Dad asked me how many times I went around the field before I realized I'd lost that. <laughs> and then your dad, he was such a, he's a, even a worse nut than Ray is. We were down south when we were doing that waterway, and there was water down there. And yeah, we had just we had just we'd been married what about four years? Yeah, not very long. We pulled some really bad stunts on her. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, we were down there working on a waterway, and we got that forty twenty stuck. So we went to a, a neighbor and borrowed his tractor to pull it out. Well, when the water broke, the the platform on that 4020 was probably about three foot off the ground, but the water was running over the top of that platform. So there's pretty deep holes and it had dual wheels. So Dad had convinced Joyce that we lost the chain out there pulling that tractor out and said, I had shorts on. So. And said, you, you need to walk out there and see if you can pick that chain up. Wasn't that what it was? Mm -hmm. The chain. Yep. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, no, you need yeah. to get a little farther north. So she'd walk a little far. Now come this way. And of course, when she did, the hole of where we had spun for that tractor being stuck was probably about five foot deep. <laughs> I just went plumb under. <laughs> oh, it was, I came up, I was spitting mad. There Golly, was steam, I was there mad. Was steam coming off of that water. <laughs> But they always said that they could hear his dad laughing all the way up here to the house, you know, because he was just, just thought that was a... Seems like that should have earned you flowers. It's something should have earned you think. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, his dad was a mess. We've sent her out for after panel stretchers and... There is no such thing as a panel stretcher, but I'd, I'd run all the way up to the shop to... I can't find them, you know, and I'd run back. And, oh, they were just laughing because, you know... <laughs> I'm the dumb city girl, you know. <laughs> Maybe 41 years has been too long. <laughs> no. well, I know where your suitcase is at. I, lo I loved your dad. Back? I loved your mom, but I loved your dad, especially. You know, his mom was just a real quiet and, you know, always wore dresses and just took care of her family and did, you know, and, but his dad, oh my gosh, he was fed. I'd get mad at him, but he, he was always, always laughing and making us laugh, wasn't he? What were holidays like, like Thanksgiving and Christmas? Well, Christmas in my house was rough, because I only got one present. He's, his birthday's Christmas Day, so. I always got a better one, but that wasn't the idea of it, you know. But that one year you were, what, three or four, and you got a drum? <laughs> Didn't take long to break the drum. So he's running through the house, he just opened it, bing, 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 boom, <laughs> fell on it, and broke his only toy. <laughs> no, uh, we, always, we always had at least Thanksgiving and Christmas was big family get-togethers. Of course, my dad had a big family because of nine kids, you know, and they usually all came, you know, because of my grandparents. Did they come there. up here? Yeah. And, um, of course, my grandma, she never, they, they never had a lot, but she made sure that everybody got something. It might have been a pair of socks. might have been a bow tie. It might have been a whistle, you know, or 
or she might have made a crocheted item or something, you know, but every, every grandchild always got something. Like I say, it might have, it might have been a pair of socks, but, you know, we all got something, you know. And the same way at, uh, at my parents' house. That was one thing they always done was Christmas. Might only been one present, like to say. But uh, when we moved up here, there were two big trees, and there was a, I don't remember the hammock, but the the chain was in the tree. But that it was a good in time. The tree. Mm -hmm. That was a good time. We kids always played on the hammock, didn't you? Mm -hmm. That's what we usually ask that too. What would you do for fun? Since you work so hard, what would you do for fun? Um. Well, we'd make we whenever we'd come up here. My grandpa always worked with wood, and uh, he'd always have some uh, pieces of I'm gonna say maybe one to fours, one to threes, lath or something like that laying around, and we'd. <laughs> We'd make guns, <laughs> or we would take uh, down when we lived down south when we were growing up. We'd take old gears uh, and uh, find as many nails or whatever we could in an old two before, and we'd make our own tractors. And uh, think of being big farmers, you know, I guess, and whatnot, but. We, we made a lot of our own toys to play with when we were little. And then, of course, in the summertime, we had horses. And part of our job was, uh, of course, my dad rented some ground over east of here. And part of our job was to drive the milk cows up in, for the pasture and put them in the pasture for that day, that morning, after we got done milking. And then every night, bring them back around four o'clock. And, uh. Well, that was work. That wasn't fun. Well, it was. Oh, you made it, it was fun. fun. You made, made it fun, fun I guess. Mm -hmm. we'd, always, we'd always do, like, trail rides. If they was a mud hole, we'd make them cows walk through it. <laughs> Imagination, huh? Well, when you got in trouble, who would, who would discipline you? Uh, both of them. My dad whip us with a blast water, a wire one. And uh, whether we needed it or not, he'd give us at least five swats. And uh, we it, usually but... needed it. Yeah. <laughs> we usually needed it. <laughs> one time. Of course, you see stuff on TV when you're little and you think, especially back then, you know, that could be believable. Well, we, my older brother and I, we hung my younger brother literally by the neck. Yeah. <laughs> Stood him up on a barrel. <laughs> and yeah. kicked the barrel out. <laughs> <laughs> and he survived. Yeah, he's yeah, alive. He's okay. <laughs> no, he's, a, he's okay. Yeah. We uh, we found an old an old bicycle uh, and me and of course the the back end of it was all messed up. But we built a chariot and actually, of course, with the horses, we fixed a way up to pull that chariot. And we probably had more fun with that thing because when Dad was out plowing, you leave a plow for. Her. Well, I don't know whether it was me or my younger brother got the idea, or, yeah, my younger brother, but my older brother was on it. And we got the big idea to cross that <laughs> plow fur and pull in that chariot. Well, you can imagine what that done to that chariot. <laughs> to that chariot, it just stood it up and he just kept going. <laughs> Broke the front wheel off of it. <laughs> but I guess that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wonder any of them survived, I think. <laughs> well, 
when you turned 16, your dad locked you in the stanchions. Yeah, he locked me in the stanchions. Of course. In the milk bar. They were, they were homemade, sta homemade wooden stanchions. Which and is where you, I, you know, stanchions, you know, put, where you put the, cow, the put the cow and lock them in there so that they'd stay in there and eat. And, and usually once in a while, the, to keep the feed from rotting or, you know, getting bad, we had a deal made where you'd dig it around the four befores or the two befores that came down through it or the cows can lick it out. And of course, like I say, my dad could, he could sell sand to a, an Egyptian. I mean, he, he that just was his temperament. And he said, would you mind cleaning them deals out real quick before we bring in more cows? Well, sure. I grabbed that deal and got in there, and about that time that stanchion went locked. And he ripped me. We're not in fun, I don't think, you know. Anyway. <laughs> oh, it made me so mad. But he told me, he said, son, I'll probably never ever get to do that again. <laughs> and I said, no, you won't. <laughs> but that was the last time he ever whipped me, and he did it in love. It was just, it was the old times, you know, if your kids needed whooped, you whooped them, you know, and I, it's the way we raised ours, and all three of them are, are great kids, you know, never had any trouble out of any of them. Not that I knew of, I guess. Well, I'm sure they didn't. <laughs> to. I did things I wasn't supposed to. You can do almost all of it again. Yeah, I probably would. I probably don't think there's anything I'd want to change. Hmm. Well, then our final question will be, what do you see for the next 100 years for the farm? Oh, probably my youngest son still farming it, and hopefully our grandkids hanging on to it. We want, we want it to stay real. We want to... Leave, if we can leave it where we can get these three farms paid off, they'll have, especially this one, but, you know, then they'll have a legacy that comes behind that maybe they won't struggle like we had to struggle, you know, to, to keep it and, and buy it. And I think, I don't know, my, our granddaughter, she's 15, the oldest one, and she swears she's, this is her house. She's coming back here. This is where she's living. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think... Things change, obviously, but uh, I think they will all, our daughter is only, she's about an hour away in Woodward, and our oldest son's in Arkansas, and I don't know that they'll, they'll ever come back. He would choose to, but, you know, marriage and, and stuff makes a difference in jobs, but I think they all have, are very grounded in the roots of the farm, you know, so it'll, this will always be home to them, and I think it'll always be home to our grandkids. There's not a better place in the world than right here. I'd say great grandpa Watson would be happy. Mm -hmm. I was, we were having a discussion, I was at, in Houston last week and it was like, where would you go on vacation? You know, and I was like, I'd go to the farm and they're like, but you live there. And I said, but it's the best place ever, you know? So this is where I always come back to, he'll never leave, and hopefully our, our kids will be here for another hundred years plus, so. Anything else you want to add before we sign off? No. This has been fun. It's been good. Well, we thank you very much for sharing. Yeah. It's been great.